in 55 in the name of W. Clare Daly. And Tara. Under the provisions of the Greyhound Industry Act 1958, the regulation of coursing is chiefly a matter for the Irish Coursing Club, subject to the general control and direction of Board Nagan. The welfare of greyhounds involved in coursing is provided for in the Welfare of Greyhounds Act 2011, which inter alia requires that persons who, are, who course greyhounds must have regard to the code of practice in the care and welfare of the greyhound, developed jointly by the Irish Coursing Club and Board Nagan. The Irish Coursing Club has assured my department that it has extensive systems and practices in place to underpin the welfare of hares and greyhounds involved in coursing, and it goes to great lengths to ensure the highest standards of welfare are adhered to. A monitoring committee on coursing is in place, comprising officials from my department, the Irish Coursing Club, and the National Parks and Wildlife Service, to monitor developments in coursing, and the situation is kept under constant review to ensure that coursing is run in a well-controlled and responsible manner. Hairs may only be collected for coursing by clubs affiliated to the Irish Coursing Club in accordance with the terms of licences granted by the Department of Arts, Heritage and the Gaeltacht. These licences contain 26 conditions which have refined over the years, the majority of which are central to hair welfare and include a variety of measures such as a requirement that a qualified veterinarian attends all coursing meetings to report on the health of the hairs, a prohibition on the coursing of hairs more than once in the same day, a prohibition on the coursing of sick or pregnant hairs, and a requirement that hairs be released back into the wild during daylight hours. Coursing clubs are required to comply fully with directives, instructions and guidance notes issued by the Irish Coursing Club in all matters relating to the capture, keeping in captivity, tagging, marking, coursing and release of hairs, and the muzzling of greyhounds. I have no plans to ban hair coursing. But I have no hesitation in saying that it is critically important that those involved in the sport must operate in accordance with the regulatory framework and with the welfare of both hares and greyhounds in mind at all times. Problem because the rules on the one hand belie a reality that is very different. We have an incredible contradiction where hares are protected under the Wildlife Act and indeed where all animals are protected under the Animal Health and Welfare Act with the exception of hares for the purposes of coursing. And this is, has resulted in a situation in 2015 where 7,000 hares were taken from the wild to be used in live coursing events. And actually we're one of a minority of countries who allow this barbarity to continue because contrary to your statements, Minister, in terms of the conditions that hare, hares face, the reports from the National Parks and Wildlife Service who are employed to monitor this situation Situation would have told you that only 17 out of the 75 uh, events which were held in the country last year actually had NEPS officials in attendance at them. The state of many of the hares requiring assistance released back to the wild in very distressed states is evident in uh, their reports which would refute the information you've been given by uh, Board Nagan. It is an Irish solution to an Irish problem. I'm not sure if Deputy Daly is suggesting that we should have an imported solution to an Irish problem. Um, I, I would also highlight that you know a very high proportion of hares netted for hare coursing were returned to the wild uh, successfully. For example, at the end of the 2014-15 season, 99.3% of hares captured were released in a healthy condition back after coursing. Now, we have moved some distance in respect of uh, where coursing was some years ago in terms of the monitoring... Uh, and, and the high standards of welfare that we apply in terms of both the greyhound and the hare. And I think that's uh, something that's a tribute to all parties in this, Board the Gun, the Irish Coursing Club, the National Parks and Wildlife Service and my department. And for that reason, I think we, we have reached a situation where we have a sustainable industry now, and I do not propose to ban the industry. The solution actually is to ban coursing uh, outright, and I speak as a deputy who represents the only part of Dublin where this practice still continues, and in fact the Irish Council Against Blood Sports has a video of this barbarity in my constituency, in Balbriggan, of agitated hares running up and down within the confines of a coursing uh, field, while coursing members shout and scream at them in that enclosure. The figures of hares that are released back, Minister, would also, and the NEPS officials have said this, many die afterwards, are in a very stressed state. In Nina, for example, some of the ones included heavily pregnant hares, which you've told us are due to be uh, protected and so on. So your rules actually 
don't serve to protect the hares in that regard and how could they when you have a scenario really of greyhounds weighing 60 to 88 pounds traveling at 43 miles per hour they can do a hell of a lot of harm to a hare who weighs about six pounds, uh, even if they wear a muzzle. So the protections really aren't worth what they say. And in fact, this is one of the reasons why the Irish hares, a unique race of mountain hare, is now becoming extinct, even though on the one hand we say it should be protected. Thank you very much, Minister. To conclude, please. Depending to add to what I've stated already, I think we have travelled some distance in respect of the supervision of uh, hair coursing, and uh, I don't have any uh, plans to ban it. Um, I equally would, would add, however, that all those involved, all the parties to hair coursing, must uh, operate within the law and, and the terms of licences issued to them in respect to hair capture, etc. Sir, uh, question number 56 is in the name of Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan. It's been taken by Deputy Daly. Uh, Minister, to respond, please. Um, thank you, Count Corla. All exporters of dogs are required to provide the following animal health and welfare certification in relation to compliance with identification requirements, fitness for intended journey, health status, rabies vaccination requirements. Once these animal certifications requirements are met, dogs, including greyhounds, may be exported internationally. Exporters are also required to comply with the provisions of the Council Regulation EC No. 1 of 2005 on the protection of animals during transport. I'm aware <coughs> excuse me, that a very small number of greyhounds have been exported to Macau in the past um, two months. I understand that Board Nagan, which is responsible for the governance regulation and development of the greyhound industry in the Republic and the well-being of greyhounds, has developed a code of practice in relation to the welfare of greyhounds, which sets out specific standards that all individuals engaged in the care and management of registered greyhounds are expected to meet. The code emphasises that owners and keepers must take full responsibility for the physical and social well-being of greyhounds in line with best welfare practice. Oversight mechanisms in place um, um, oversight mechanisms in place regarding greyhound exports include, include interagency cooperation, cooperation with fellow members of the International Greyhound Forums and intelligence and information which is received from welfare officers during the course of investigations carried out under the Welf Welfare of Greyhounds uh, Act of 2011. Where any breaches of welfare standards are identified un under that Act, Board Nagon takes stringent actions and prosecutions ensure in, in, a, in accordance to ensure accordance, uh, accordance with the Act. Officials of my department have recently met with Board Nagon and the welfare members of the International Greyhound Forum respected, represented by the ISPCA and Dogs Trust here in Ireland to consider the issues surrounding the export of greyhounds. Board Nagan advises all owners involved in the export of greyhounds to only export to destinations with high animal welfare standards and that they provide, they provide the expected levels of greyhound care and management as defined under the code internationally. And I endorse this view. I should point out, however, that international trade takes place in a very legally complex environment and that national le legislation is not legally binding on activities thank you. Thank in you other states. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Daly, one minute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Minister, if you have met with the ISPCA, you'll know that they and the Irish Blue Cross and indeed Dogs Trust are implacably opposed to the export of uh, greyhounds to China. And your response today is contradictory as indeed it has been from your predecessors because on the one hand we've been told previously as you've tried to do today that once the appropriate animal health and welfare certificate uh, requirements are met in transit that it doesn't really matter what happens to them at the end of their journey but then contradicting that is the fact that the department in March of this year blocked the Irish Greyhound Board from exporting dogs to China over animal welfare concerns and the reality is that this practice is continuing it poses huge danger to the dogs involved. It has now been internationally highlighted by animal welfare organisations and indeed by it's got quite a lot of, of global attention. And uh, really what Deputy O'Sullivan's question is seeking for you to do is to intervene in this situation and play a role. And to be honest, you can. 
uh, because your predecessor has done it before, but I think the circumstances mean that you should do it in this, particularly to be in line with the 2001 Welfare of Greyhounds Bill, which states that anybody who trades, transport, rares, trains uh, a greyhound has to have due regard to a code of practice which includes them being traded and transported. So the final destination is a key part in that. And if they're going to end in a destination whereby they are going to be discarded, mauled, and end up uh, undoubtedly dead, well, then we should stop that practice. Much, uh, the time has elapsed, Minister. I'd ask you to correspond uh, with the Deputy 